It was great. I mean, I'm a scientist, so I usually don't go to diving shows, if you will, diving conferences. So it was great to interact with a lot of technical divers that have much more expertise in the in the, the technical side of the dive than than I do. So uh, always great to talk to to see what techniques they're using to dive in other environments and and so on. As as the atmosphere at the event was as friendly as it gets. Um, I think I got to know, uh, I think five or six people, like just walking from the hotel to the venue, they, they looked at each other and were like, oh, you're going to dive in talks? Yes, we're going to dive. So everybody kind of walked together and, and uh, um, it was small enough that I think I met everyone in the, in the conference. So that was great. Yes, absolutely. Um, there was quite a few photographers that were interested in the work that I was doing to, to help document it. Um, I take pictures too, but all my pictures are of my fish. I usually don't take pictures of the activity of the divers, uh, of the science being done at those depths. And that's that's something that, that really attracts attention and it's needed. Um, um, so there were a lot of photographers there that talked to me about coming on my expeditions and helping us document it. Um, there were uh, companies, dive gear companies that um, uh, talked about sponsoring us. So it, it was a really good place to connect, network with other dive professionals. I think in general, uh, the, the discussion after the, the talks was really interesting and, and uh, there were a lot of good questions. I, I'm used to going to scientific conferences and the standard format in scientific conferences is 15 minute slots of which 20, 12 minutes are, are uh, uh, for the presentation and then three minutes after for the, the questions. But most of the time the scientists go over time and they, they, they end the talk at like 14 minutes, 30 seconds. And then there's 30 seconds and people do one question and then move on to the next one. In this one, we were really held to the limit of how much we could talk. And then there was a lot of time for questions after. So the discussion after the talks, I think was absolutely great. I think that by putting everybody with different backgrounds together in the same place is a, is a great contribution. There was people from uh, uh, manufacturing companies, there were photographers, there were videographers, there were scientists, uh, and there were recreational divers. There were people that broke records of diving. There were free divers, there were technical divers, there were open circuit divers. There was people from from the, the certifying agencies. So whenever you put that much people together at 100% at guaranteed something good will come out of it. Um, I think it was meeting a lot of new people um, that I didn't know before. As I said, I go to a lot of scientific conferences. So when I go to a scientific conference, I know a lot of people. Uh, there, I didn't, going in, I didn't know anybody. I was kind of anxious about it, but everybody was so friendly and I kind of met everybody uh, uh, um, and, and talked to a lot of interesting people. Uh, absolutely. If I have the chance, I'll definitely come back. Um, Portugal is a great place. The conference was great. The venue was great. The organization was fantastic. So I'll absolutely come back. I like exploration. I like finding new things. So every time we dive, I think uh, depending on where we are in the world, uh, which is most places that are really unexplored, every dive we find one or two new species. Um, that's That's something you cannot do anywhere else. In, in the planet, I don't think, um, because most areas are really well explored, except for the ocean. And the deeper you go in the ocean, um, the, the the more exploration there is to do, the more discoveries there is to do. Um, so it, it's it's really amazing to, like in every dive, discover one or two new species. Um, we just got back from the Maldives. It was our fourth trip there. Um, and uh, we found another new species. Um, so every every time, every single time, um, so uh, uh, deep reefs are unexplored because we have to use technical diving to explore them. And technical diving is, it requires a lot of training that scientists don't have time for uh, and funding for, and it requires a lot of uh, logistics support um, from the diving perspective. So it's not like recreational diving that you can do a, a course in a weekend and then the next week you can grab a tank and go diving and count fish in a shallow reef at, at uh, 10 meters. It's not like that. To go to 100 meters, you need uh, uh, a lot more training, a lot more technical support. Uh, there's a lot more rules associated with it because it's more risky. Um, so for that reason, scientists in general don't do it because of the amount of training and the, how much more expensive it is compared to the uh, to the shallow diving. 
And because they don't do it, um, uh, it's an explored. Uh, so the being in, in, in a nutshell, the reason why it's an explored is because nobody does it unless you have a very uh, strong drive to do it, which I always did. Um, I started diving when I was in high school back in the late 80s. And um, it, it, yeah, so I, I, I'm a diver for longer than I have been a biologist. Um, so diving in the ocean was always front of my mind and I always wanted to push the the limits of diving to to get science that nobody else was doing again because I really like exploring and I like uh, discovering new things now not all areas in the world are as unexplored uh, like equally unexplored there are certain regions that are more unexplored than others for example the Caribbean because it's so close to the U.S. and Florida it, they're really well explored um because even though there are no scientists that go to those depths, there are divers that go and they take pictures and they if they, they know a scientist, the scientist will tell them, oh, collect that fish. I know it's new. So they'll collect that fish for the scientists. So there, there's a, they're much better known. The Caribbean in general is much better known than other reasons, than other regions because of proximity to the U.S. Another region that's really well known is Hawaii. Again, because it's the U.S., there's a lot of diving there. There's a lot of technical diving um, there is a, a technical diver that lives there, Richard Pyle, that everybody knows as he came up with a lot of the methods for, for decompression uh, for after deep dive, especially. Um, so uh, uh, those regions are really well known. But outside of that, uh, uh, the least explored region is the Indian Ocean because it's, it's very far from the U.S. It's relatively far from Europe. The, the diving support is not that great. Um, locals in general don't dive. Um, a lot of the diving is tourists coming from the US and coming from Europe, and they don't go with all of their technical diving capability because again, even for the tourist diver, it's very expensive. Um, so that region, because of that, is really unexplored. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to study the Maldives in specific because it's, it's in the middle of the Indian Ocean, very uh, hard to get to if you're a technical diver. Um, so it remained unexplored for a long, long time. And every dive we do there, we find a new species. I, I always tend to go to the conservation side of it. Um, a lot of people think um, uh, that uh, because those regions are unexplored, they are untouched. And that is definitely not the case. Um, one of the, the, the craziest swings in emotion that I have when I'm exploring those reefs is finding a new species and then turning around and, and seeing a plastic bag right there uh, in a reef that nobody has ever seen before. Because invariably those reefs in the Maldives, if we're diving deeper than 100 meters, it's 100% in a reef that nobody has ever seen before. And then I catch a new species and then my net that I'm trying to catch the fish with gets tangled on a fishing line that broke on the reef and it's, it's right there. So that happened multiple times. And it's not unique to the Maldives. Everywhere it's like this. In the Philippines, there were some places in the Philippines, there were so many fishing lines that uh, uh, we stopped diving in some reefs because it was a tangling hazard. We were getting caught on our fins and you don't want to be at 120, 130 meters depth trying to cut a line that's, that's entangling to your, to your fins. So there's reefs that are so impacted, so polluted at those depths in the Philippines that reefs that have never been seen before that are dangerous for diving because of the amount of fishing lines that, that attached to them. Um, so uh, unlike what a lot of people think, that yes, those regions are unexplored. Yes, there are a lot of new species that have never been seen by humans before. But at the same time, they are also heavily impacted by human activities. Mm -hmm. yeah.